Hey guys, it is Friday here on Pagan Perspective. I am Brendan, aka Twisted Witch, your Friday substitute. So glad to be back here on a Friday. The last couple of months have been a bit hectic and crazy for me, so I've been had Beltane, and then the month before that I was actually back in Sydney for the Witch's Ball, so this time nothing on. Well, actually, I have a ritual I'm going to tonight, but yeah, right now there's nothing really on. So let's get into the topic this week, which I've watched all the videos this week from everyone, and I am quite impressed, and I think this is a brilliant topic that we got this week, and can be interpreted as, like a few different ways actually, so I hopefully do this topic some justice with my insights into it, but um, so yeah, the question was about how we feel about past lives with the influences of curses, um, vows or contracts that you made, or were the object of and them influencing our current life, whether it be through poor health, financial issues, love issues, anything like that. And then also looking at how we can break these ties, break these bonds, or just pretty much set aside any negative past life junk we would have picked up. So for me personally, I haven't, like what Charlie said, I haven't really done a lot of past life work or gone into past life regression much. I've had a meditation where I kind of experienced part of it, but I'm not sure if it was just something that was in my mind or it was actually past life stuff. But um, looking at it from the point that if we were to carry over any past life baggage, pretty much, it's like a, it's like a bad relationship, isn't it? This past life, <laughs> carrying over our baggage um, to this life. But I think from the point of curses and vows and contracts, they're only responsible, it all depends on how you, um, I suppose how you worded it or how you look at it or how you empowered it because to give power to these vows, these contracts, these curses is what allows them to grow and allows them to be as powerful as they can get. Um, from the point that you may carry over, um, these sort of things, I'm not too sure because if we carry over stuff like that, well, why don't we carry over a lot more memories and a lot more knowledge of previous lives? Um, I kind of feel that once you have a new life, a new incarnation, you, you kind of get a bit of a, a, a wipe back, a clean slate and anything that was in that previous life um, won't affect you anymore until I suppose you become more conscious and aware of it. So say if you found out that in previous life you were an axe murdering fiend, um, it's very much about your choice whether you want to give power to that previous life and deal with the, like, the punishment and judgment that comes with that, or just not acknowledge it and, or acknowledge it and embrace it and take it into yourself that this is part of who you've been and that's not who you are now. You're different in this life, you've changed. but. Yeah, I think past lives for me, it's something that I kind of really need to look into more because it's not something I've really focused on with this. But um, if you were to look at a point from, I think it's Tibetan or Hindu, the religion, um, from their point with the karmic reincarnation cycle. So everything that you do in this life affects your karmic, re karmic reincarnation in the next life. So if I was to be a complete prick and bastard in this life, I go from being a human to maybe something like a caterpillar or a bug or something like that. And um, so that's kind of set out more in that way. So if you're to look at it that, like from that part, if we did anything negative or had anything negative attached to us, would we really be incarnated, incarnated reincarnated, <laughs> reincarnated as a human in this cycle? Um, I'm not too sure. But for me personally, if I was to be reincarnated as a bug or a caterpillar, I'd be pretty happy because like all life is sacred, no matter if it's bugs, if it's trees, if it's water, if it's humans, all life is sacred. It's all has the same equality and value here. So I think it wouldn't be really much of an, in, like an, an insult for me if I was to be come back as a caterpillar. But um, I think that pretty much covers the first part. But the second part, I actually learned a technique which I think could be translated or transferred to this. So while I was in Melbourne on my, my holiday, I went to a ritual retreat 
and a friend of mine, Douglas Ezzy, actually taught us this technique he's been working on, which is pretty much the, the ideal behind it is to embrace like negative qualities and, and our demons and take them into ourselves and disempower them. So first off, you need to identify what they are. So I think this could be the same with curses. So if you're having something to do with love issues, looking at kind of a source for that and going through and looking at that and then identifying and acknowledging and naming it. So once you've done that, the first part is, I'm trying to remember the gestures correctly. So to the eyes, so you gesture to your eyes and then point outwards, gesture to your solar plexus. You probably can't see that right now, but your solar plexus and gesture out. And it was, I, I see and I sense you. I'm pretty sure, or I see and I feel you was the first action. So the second one is pointing to your heart, then pointing out, pointing to your groin and then pointing out. Um, and then it was, I feel and acknowledge you. And then you say, I am Brendan, or you say your name. So I am whatever your name is. And then you say, I, I accept and I take you into me. So in doing so, what you're doing is disempowering this force that has power over you, taking it into yourself, taking its strengths and ability into a place where you're stronger and you can take this on and absorb it and break it down and take it into your system. So in doing so, disempowering it, recycling it, renull it, like reworking it so that it can be used from being such a negative thing into a positive thing. And I actually thought that was really quite interesting technique. I used it on a, um, have anger and frustration. And I was working through that right before going away to this retreat and, um, yeah, working through it with that. So I actually found that to be quite an interesting technique. And I think that could be used here. Um, another technique that I've had, which could possibly be applied to this was to, um, it was a cut, cut the ties or cut the connections. Um, sort of technique. So what you need to do is like to focus, get meditated, like meditated, start meditating and get grounded. And once you've done that, start to see yourself um, floating up above your body. And then once you're floating above your body, so say like several meters above your body, you look down and in front of you, there'll be a stage. And on this stage, um, you start to focus on so people from your past so when you were younger as a child see all those people there and then you see from there from like all over your body you start seeing little cords and tendrils that um, connect to these people because once you have met these people you've got memories attached and you've got connections made so then you see all these people that when you're a child and then you move into the next stage when you started going into like into preschool um, early primary school, then into high school. And so the circle, like the people on the stage starts to feel further and further. And then you keep going. So teenage years, early twenties, depending on what age you get to, you just keep going until it's current. So then you see that all these ties and connections are attached to you. And then what you want to imagine is like a, right above your crown, um, a small disc of light starts to appear so um, whatever color you associate with disconnecting so maybe like pure blur like burning bright white light and then you just see that disc start to open up and form a ring and then watch it just slowly go down your body and feel it moving down and as it goes through it cuts those ties away and you just see slowly those cords and tendrils that are attached to those people start to like not be elasticized, but like start to reel back into those people that have made those connections. And then you keep, you do that process all the way down your body and then it gets down to past your toes and the soles of your feet and the ring forms a disc again and then start focusing on it to open it up again and have it come up from your feet all the way back up to the crown of your head. So you do this three times just to make sure that you get any ties, any connections that are there. And in doing so, this pretty much, it helps cleanse you, clean you up. Also helps you to reclaim some of your power and your strength that you may have given away to others that they've been feeding off these cords and ties for that. And also you can do this um, if you want to focus on past lives. 
So say the same thing that I said with like you're looking through your childhood into your adulthood, perhaps change it to looking into previous lives, previous incarnations, focusing on that, any ties that may be linked to this life you're in right now, and see them being cut away and dissolved because if you're giving your power away, it's when you're exhausted and you have nothing left that you have to worry because how are you meant to function or cope in this world if you can't actually put energy into anything that you need to do? So it's very much about focusing on that and then reclaiming your power. But also once you've completed that technique, so the three times you've done the ring around you, um, just focus on drawing all those little tendrils that are left that you've, like the little, like the cut sides that are on yours, absorb them and take them back into yourself and reclaim that power that you've given away. So in doing so, you I remember doing it for the first time and I felt so much lighter and it was just crazy. I felt more myself. I'm actually probably going to go do it after ritual tonight again because it's just a good technique to do that. So yeah, I think pretty much that's most of my answers for this topic. So I think, I think Charlie did mention about, yeah, not giving your power away. So I'm going to say the same thing. It's like, know who you are, know who you are in this life, reclaim any power you've given away, reclaim your form, your shape, your identity, wear that identity and be that person because that is who you are in this life. You're not any previous reflections or incarnations. You are current. You're in this time. So embrace that life, live that life and dance your dance. So that's me for this week. So I'm going to sign off now. So much love and blessings, everyone, and blessed be. Bye.